سعدنا هذا الصباح باستقبال فخامة الرئيس جمهورية قبرص. We were pleased uh, this morning uh, to receive the President uh, of the Republic of Cyprus, uh, Nikos Christodoridis, and President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. And we held a fruitful uh, meeting during which we tackled the bilateral relations between Lebanon and EU member states, especially Cyprus. Also, the situation in the region, the tragic situation in Gaza and Israeli attacks. I renewed my call to the European Union and the world to pressure Israel to stop its ongoing aggression <coughs> against uh, the Palestinian people and also to work to establish a final comprehensive and just solution to the Palestinian cause. We renewed our call to the international community to pressure Israel to stop its aggression against South Lebanon. The main part of the meeting was devoted to discussing the file of displaced Syrians on Lebanese territory and cooperation between Lebanon, Cyprus and EU member states to address this file and its direct and indirect repercussions. In this context, we first expressed our appreciation for the understanding of some EU countries at their last meeting of the request of the Lebanese government to reconsider EU policies related to the management of the crisis of uh, displaced Syrians in Lebanon. This position is actually translated by the visit of His Excellency the President of Cyprus and the President of the European Commission. Since the outbreak of the fighting in Syria in 2011, Lebanon has borne the greatest burden among the countries of the region and the world in the matter of hosting the displaced, with this file putting a great pressure on the Lebanese people as a whole and on all Lebanese sectors. We have always been keen to cooperate with various European and international bodies and organizations in this file, but the current reality of this issue is greater than Lebanon's ability to cope, especially since the number of displaced people is about one-third of the Lebanese population. With the resulting burdens and challenges, Lebanon, Lebanon's economic and financial crisis is compounded and its infrastructure is decimated. What is more dangerous is the escalation of resentment between displaced Syrians and some of the Lebanese host community as a result of the events and crimes that have increased in frequency and now threaten the security of Lebanon and the Lebanese and its stability. In this meeting, I cannot fail to, to recall what I have put forward in all international meetings I hold, especially with the European Union, where I was warning that the fireball associated with the files of file of displaced will not be limited to Lebanon, but will extend to Europe to turn it into a regional and international crisis. We are firmly convinced that the security of Lebanon is related to the security of the countries of Europe and vice versa, and that our serious and constructive cooperation to resolve this file constitutes the real entrance to the stability of the situation, taking into account mutual respect, fruitful cooperation and European and international awareness to preserve Lebanese specificity, which is a moral value for the East and the West. We reject the transformation of our homeland into an alternative homeland and call on our friends in the European Union to preserve the value of Lebanon and to proceed to solve this fight radically and as soon as possible based on the mutual knowledge between us and the European Union and the world countries, which is that the entry to the solution is political. In our opinion, based on the current reality of Syria, what is required as a first phase is to recognize on the European and international levels that most of the Syrian areas have become safe, which facilitate the process of returning displaced persons. And in the first phase, those who entered Lebanon after 2016, most of them were displaced to Lebanon for pure economic reasons and do not qualify as displaced. 
On this occasion, we reiterate the call to the European Union, as we have always reiterated that the support of the displaced in their countries is required to encourage them to return voluntarily, thus guaranteeing them a decent living in their homeland. If we stress this issue, it is from the point of view of our warning that Lebanon will become a transit country from Syria to Europe, and the problems that occur on the Shipriot border are only a sample of what may happen if this issue is not addressed radically. Your Excellency, the President of Cyprus, President of the European Commission, Lebanon appreciates the European Union's new position in supporting Lebanon's military and security institutions to enable them to control maritime and land borders and to carry out their duties in preventing illegal migration to and from Lebanon and to support Lebanese communities in need, while at the same time allocating part of the support to stimulate the voluntary return of displaced Syrians. Once again, I welcome our distinguished guests and God willing our cooperation will be permanent and continuous for the advancements of, uh, advancement of our countries, their security, stability and the well-being of their people. The big tank is our friend, our neighbor of Lebanon, our friend President Nikos of what he is doing and he did this breakthrough with the European Union. I'm very thankful to you, my friend Nikos. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. Thank you very much for welcoming, indeed, President Christo Zoulides, here, Nikos, and me um, here in Beirut. Lebanon is a beautiful, a diverse and vibrant country, full of energy and full of potential. <coughs> but it faces significant challenges domestically and as a result of tensions and war in the region. And we understand this. And we are here first and foremost to say that the European Union strongly supports Lebanon and its people, and we want to reinforce our long-standing cooperation. This was also the very clear message of European leaders at our last summit. And today we, um, Nikos and me, are here in a team spirit of Europe um, to reiterate that message. Today, we discussed how we can strengthen our political and economic relations and support the security and stability of Lebanon. To underline our support, I can announce a financial package of 1 billion euros for Lebanon that would be available of from this year until 2027. We want to contribute to Lebanon's social economic stability, first by strengthening basic services, investment in, for example, education or social protection, investment in health for the people in Lebanon. Second, we will accompany you as you take forward economic, financial and banking reforms these reforms are key for the long-term improvement of the overall economic situation of the country. And this would allow the business environment and the banking sector to regain the trust of the international community and thus enable private sector investment. Lebanon needs and deserves a positive economic momentum to give opportunities to its businesses and its citizens. Third element, security and stability are also key for these investments. We will support the Lebanese armed forces and the general and the internal security forces. This will be mainly focused on providing equipment and providing training and the necessary infrastructure for border management. In addition, it would be very helpful for Lebanon to conclude a working arrangement with Frontex, particularly on information exchange and situational awareness. Fourth, to help, help you in managing migration, we are committed to maintain legal pathways open to Europe and resettle refugees from Lebanon to the European Union. At the same time, we count on your good cooperation to prevent illegal migration and to combat migrant smuggling. Finally, 
We understand the challenges that Lebanon faces with hosting Syrian refugees and other displaced persons. It is vital to ensure the well-being of the host communities and Syrian refugees. Since 2011, the European Union has supported Lebanon with 2.6 billion euros, not only for the Syrian refugees, but also for the host communities. And we will continue to do so. We will also look at how we can make the EU's assistance more effective. This includes exploring how to work on a more structured approach to voluntary returns to Syria in close cooperation with UNHCR. And at the same time, there needs to be strength and support from the international community for humanitarian and early recovery programs in Syria. I would like to finish by focusing on the conflict in Gaza and its impact on Lebanon. We fully support all efforts to reach a ceasefire and release of all hostages. And we have just increased further and our extensive humanitarian aid to Gaza. Ultimately, we need a peace process towards a two-state solution. It is the only solution that can bring lasting peace and stability to the Middle East. And in the meantime, we must continue to work towards a de-escalation of conflict. And we are deeply concerned as about the volatile situation in South Lebanon. What is at stake is the security of both Lebanon and Israel. The two cannot be disassociated, so we call for the full implementation of the UN Security Council Resolution 1701 by all parties. This needs to be part of a negotiated diplomatic, diplomatic settlement. Here too, the Lebanese armed forces are critical and the European Union is ready to work on how to bolster their capability. Dear Prime Minister, to conclude, let me assure you that you can count on the European Union's sustained support for Lebanon and its people. It's a long-term partnership and friendship. The bonds between Lebanon and Europe are deep and they are strong. It is these bonds that will continue to drive our cooperation and thanks again for having me here and for being such a fantastic host. Dear Prime Minister, dear Ursula, dear friends, it has been uh, less than a month since my last visit in, in, uh, to, Lebanon, to Lebanon. And today I'm, I'm very pleased and uh, privileged to, to be here once again, this time together with the President of the European Commission. Let me start by thanking Prime Minister for his warm hospitality, always in, uh, in Lebanon. Lebanon is uh, Cyprus, geographically closest neighbor, and we share traditionally very warm and very friendly uh, bilateral relations. And being here today, I want to, to repeat this, feels like being home. Dear friends, um, I'm honored to be part of this, of this day because I consider it as a, as a historic day. I feel very pleased that following relevant uh, consultations. I'm here together with, uh, with Ursula for the announcement of a comprehensive support package for Lebanon and the Lebanese people. As the president of the, of the commission I mentioned, the package includes interallied assistance for developing various programs for the Lebanese people, for the Lebanese armed forces, the Lebanese security, and smuggling actions, border control and management, support for Lebanon economy, and, and many more. I'm very confident that uh, this package announced today will help enhance the capacity of the Lebanese authorities to handle various challenges, including, of course, controlling land and maritime borders, ensuring the safety of its citizens, first and foremost, fight against people's smuggling and continue their fight against, against terrorism. I would like, and uh, dear Ursula, I would like to thank you for your leadership, your foresight, 
and decisive action. We are very crucial in making sure that this package will become a reality and that it will be announced swiftly as development in this region, in our neighborhood, made it very time sensitive for the European Union to respond. So thank you very much. Dear friends, let me be clear. Today's visits, a visit and announcements are not only very important in terms of substance. They are also very important in terms of symbolism. Today, the European Union, this is Ursula is the first president of the European Commission visiting Liban. So there's also the, the symbolism. Today, the European Union clearly states that it's actively present and that it will continue to be at the side of Lebanon. Today we are taking an important step in making Lebanon stronger. We are also taking an important step in further strengthening the board between the European Union and Lebanon so that we can better address joint common challenges. Cyprus and uh, myself personally have been one of the strongest proponents for further enhancing of the European Union Lebanon relationship and today I'm very glad that it's substantially moving forward. Dear friends, due to the, the proximity to the region, our flight Ursula was 20 minutes, approximately 20, 25 minutes. Cyprus has a deeper understanding on the issues and the challenges that you are facing, Lebanon is, is facing. Their reverberations are also directly affect Cyprus as well as the European Union. The long-standing conflict in, uh, in Syria has increasingly negative effects on Lebanon and its people. And while we commend the Lebanese government for hosting a large number of Syrian refugees for more than 12 years, we are also fully cognizant of the enormous pressure that this creates to your economy and to your society. I want, to, I want to assure you that Lebanon's efforts are not taken for granted. I also want to assure you that I'm aware that we cannot continue as business as usual. The long-standing uh, issue needs to be effectively, decisively, and comprehensively addressed. And let me be clear. The current situation is not sustainable for Lebanon, and it's not sustainable for Cyprus, it's not sustainable for the European Union. It hasn't been sustainable for years, but developments, especially in these recent months, force us to seek immediate solutions. And I fully agree that we need to work closer and in, and in much more extent with our partners, and of course the UNHCR, in discussing the issue of voluntary returns and not only. The situation in certain regions of Syria should be re-examined. Dear friends, on this, I will repeat it, historic day, it is also very important to recognize that the current status quo is unsustainable and that peace, stability, and prosperity in Lebanon will only come if we all fulfill our commitments. In this context, I underline the importance of actively engaging to potentially restart the conclusions for the conclusion of the, uh, the discussions for the conclusion of the partnership priorities between the European Union and Lebanon to facilitate cooperation at operational and technical level between Lebanon and Frontex to implement the necessary and thorough reforms in line with the IMF request and here the European Union can really help you, and I'm talking, having experience from the support that we received from the European Union back in 2013 with economic challenges in, in Cyprus, and to, to also address the issue of, of accountability. Even more importantly, Cyprus will continue to be supportive, Mr. Prime Minister, of Lebanon's efforts to elect a new president a development that will represent an enormous political and symbolic message of change and of moving forward. And I'm sure that 
Lebanon will do its part and will do our own part. Dear friends, and I'm concluding with this, a more uh, peaceful, a more stable, a more prosperous Lebanon is essential for the whole Eastern Mediterranean, our immediate neighborhood, and of course, for the European Union itself. I'm a true believer of Lebanon. I visited this country, I don't remember how many times, say there is a Minister of Foreign Affairs, now as a president. So I'm a true believer of Lebanon and the limitless potential of its people. We, Lebanon and Cyprus, have historically supported each other to navigate difficult and turbulent times in our region, and I'm sure that we are going to do this again, do it again together. It is up to all of us to make today a day of a new, hopeful, and a very promising beginning, a day that Lebanon will decisively start getting towards a brighter future. And for this, you can rely to the European Union, you can rely personally to the President of the Commission, to Ursula, you can rely to your neighbors. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, gentlemen.